Cheers. Cheers, happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you for driving <laughs> and flying and wow. We have recently had a bit of an adventure and tonight we thought we would tell you about it. As you may or may not recall, I don't know how long you've been watching my channel, but this is my bestest friend in the world. This is Sean Diddy. And we did a video, a couple of videos, a couple of years ago. Oh, isn't that crazy? I was thinking about the Vegas trip. That was... Almost four years ago. Okay, time flies. That yeah. was, so literally that was our test trip. Because what is it, LA to Vegas? That's five, five hours. hours. And we did great. Um, but because she loves me, we did what, 29 hours? We just did 29 hours. <laughs> Should we back up and tell the story? <laughs> we should. You're like, what did you do? Huh? Okay. Why? Why would you do that? How far There's a pandemic. Rewind to the beginning of the pandemic. Yes. So let's go back one year. A year ago, March 11 is pretty much March 11, 2020 is when we all sort of discovered that we had this horrific pandemic on our hands. And I moved into the house that I live in now just two weeks before that. And in fact, on March 11 and 12, I was up in Portland shooting an infomercial and then came back, it was a very terrifying experience. But you were going through your own terrifying experience. Okay, well, I really think I might've had COVID. I mean, I was sick for, I shot an infomercial. So I, I flew to Miami, shot the infomercial, came back somewhere in there, I, I was sick for, I, I looked at my calendar, it was like 16 days. Oh. So, and the whole coughing, and obviously, I mean, thank goodness, I ended up okay, but um, that, I started feeling better around, I think it was about the 14th, I'm like, I was all better, and I had to make this decision of, because I had put all my stuff in storage, um, I had been in Austin, Texas, working at a TV shopping network, Shop LC, and had come here because we had big plans to do stuff like this because we were gonna hang yeah. out with you and then all this happened and so i i kind of did the all my stuff is in iowa in storage i'm finishing my phd at a university in iowa they have on-campus housing for phd students that is inexpensive and i grew up in iowa not that i love the weather but i was like eh, and you were safe. miss iowa i was miss iowa 132 years ago <laughs> So I went back. So I literally packed all my stuff and I left on the 16th, slept in Albuquerque, took my cat Binks, who is my co-pilot, and then drove the other half the next day. So I drove like a 16 hour day. Don't do that. Um, but I was panicked because literally the rest stops were closing. Like you couldn't, gas stations were closing. I was trying to make sure I had a full tank of gas because I didn't know if the town would have closed all their gas stations. So I had my gloves and my mask and it, and my hand sanitizer, and, and you stayed in touch with me and, and were like, you know, where are you? And I made it, um, and I think I should stop there because that was almost exactly a year ago, and you've probably had this, like you kind of find out who your friends are in a pandemic. In a pandemic, yeah. We Everybody's had their own individual growing experience and learning experience and traumatic experience through this pandemic and we all have different stories and we all have very similar stories and one of the things that I think we've both experienced and I'm pretty sure most of you have experienced is just feeling so desperately alone. Uh, I live with my boyfriend so I was not completely alone so I had my love right there every day. He has had to go to work throughout the pandemic. So I was alone during the day, but at night I would see him. So I didn't have quite that level of loneliness. You had Binks. Yeah, it was the cat and I and Hallmark Channel for a very long time and a lot of wine and too much car, too much of carbonated chippies. And I'm an, I, well, I'm a stress eater. Mm, we're all stress so, eaters. Yeah, that was, and, and I don't think I realized how alone I got and in Iowa it gets really cold so by the winter time you know you just don't go outside and I was in a small town so there isn't grocery delivery you can do pickup so you can order online but you you have to drive to pick it up um, but you know like every 10 days I would venture out to go pick up my groceries and but every so often right around in that same rotation I would get a FaceTime from Monique not a call a FaceTime because you you were like I want to see your face 
Like I want to see a human. And at the time I was like, oh, I'm okay. I wasn't okay. And it does make a difference when you see somebody's face versus talking on the phone. Yeah, our, our FaceTimes really saved us. Yeah, and there were times when, um, and I was lucky enough, I, I was on part furlough, but not full furlough. Thank God I had half of a job. Um, but there were times when I'm like, I just, can, can we talk this out? Because I was trying to, okay, what bill do you pay this month? But I'm sure a lot of you went through that, where it's like, oh, shoot, I don't know. There's there's more month than money. And, and I know some people lost their jobs completely, so that was terrible. But not having like a significant other, it was great to just go, okay, here are my numbers. Can we just talk about this? And, and you just do what you can do. And, and the good thing about a true friend is you didn't judge me. You just said, well, okay, here's what we have. Let's, let's see if we can make this work. Um, yeah, so it's just, I, I am so grateful. And it was so interesting that when I, so I finally decided things are starting to open up and uh, I, I wanted to come back and visit LA. And so in all of this craziness, my cat got sick. In December like my person like she we home always her familiar yes she, let's just put that into black terms. cat like... she had she came just showed up at my house in Latuna Canyon here in LA four years ago and just moved into my house and I had had this cat shadow for 18 years and literally shadow died like I don't know a month into it so she knew like I, need, I was gonna need a cat and my daughter left for college so I had banks and we, for four years, we did everything together. We drove, we've crossed the country. That cat's driven to Miami. She's driven to New York with me. So it was, so in December she got sick and um, it was really bad. It was, she was FIV positive. So we knew this was coming. She had no teeth by the end and her kidneys just gave out and it was time. And so we kind of talked that last week. It yeah. was, yeah. it was time. Um, and so oddly enough, one of my friends had called and she's like, oh, I have a friend who needs a cat sitter. And I'm like, I'll cat sit. So I'm cat sitting for those people. And my friend Lisa, who lives here in LA, called to just check in. And she's like, yeah, we're going to go to North Carolina. I need a cat sitter. And I'm like, yeah. So, <laughs> but I usually drive across the country with a cat. And I'm like, I'm totally fine all by myself. Meow. <laughs> She gets on a plane. I, how did this even happen? You know, it was one of those things that I just thought, you know, if if I were doing it, I would want to have some moral support. I'm like, I'm not doing anything. Let me just, let me go out there and be moral support. Why, why not? Let's just, what, so it's she, kind of crazy, but <laughs> what, what's, what's, the, that's what you do for friends. You do crazy stuff. And so I got on a plane and I flew to Iowa, and you picked me up, and we drove back to California. So I flew from Burbank to Des Moines, and she picked me up, and literally picked me up. We grabbed some, some junk food for the road, because that's what you do, and then we, we just drove until okay. the sun went down. Except that, so I had the two hour drive, so I drank coffee all the way there, so when I got to Hy-Vee, which is like a famous Midwestern grocery store. I walked in, I'm like, this place is amazing, but I had to go to the bathroom. So I like ran through, but I saw this really cute jacket. They have a clothing section. They have everything in this grocery store. So we get you from the airport and we stop at Hy-Vee. She saw the jacket, bought I it. bought the jacket. Oh wait, let me get the jacket. Okay, I love it. <laughs> it's so wrinkled yeah, because it's so in you know, the car. You, you go on this big trek to Iowa, of course you buy a cute jacket in a grocery store, but it is a door way till you see it. It's adorable. Perfect. Look at that. We were Howard and I were just saying that I needed a navy blue jacket. And so here is a cute little navy blue jacket, and I'm so happy. And what's <laughs> funny is it actually fits. Like yeah. because it fits the shoulders. Usually we only have to get petites because we're not exactly tall. We're not big people. And it, it fits. It fits. And the clothes there, and to me and everything looked kinda like Ann Taylor. Like it's that yeah. a little um, it's like, I'll see if I can come back here so <laughs> it's like a little rain like it's coat. Even the right length. This yeah. is crazy. It's like it's from the grocery store. <laughs> but here was the funny thing. Before 
Okay, I, I thought that I flew wearing regular clothes like you wear when you fly, but in my suitcase, I put in what I thought would be the most ridiculous thing you could possibly wear without being in a weird costume, but just something completely impractical, just so that I could show up and look very California and over the top. And so I got off the plane, I ran to the restroom, and I changed my clothes so that, well, let me just show you. What are you wearing? Well, I thought this would be fun. I think I thought it would be a fun look for, you know, because if we're filming this, then it would be nice to... 29 hours of time. Yeah, actually, you know, I was kind of thinking that maybe we'd make it a bit, like I would wear it and you'd say, why are you wearing that? Because it's 29 hours in the car, so. crap ton of stuff in here. We might need something. Well, okay. <laughs> it's weird not hugging. That was really weird. And also, and we look, you have to, when you watch this, we look like we're shimmying. We are not shimmying. We were like, but we were doing the hi. hi. So let's do it. <laughs> but when you watch Eric, the video, does it not look like we're doing some weird like, shimmy we're dance? dance. <laughs> <laughs> Which also makes me realize how huge, uh, okay, my boobs got huge over COVID. Anyone else? Like, this has been ridiculous. I gained almost 30 pounds. I put on 20. And most of it just is my arms and my, I put on a jacket. I do um, webinars from university, and we were talking about one Saturday, I put on a jacket right before we were going to go live, and like, my eyes filled up with tears because I, I'm like, oh, little arms. It's like, I can't <laughs> move. And I left it on, but there was no way I could button it. And I, I think I, I said to you before we started this video, I'm like, what am I going to do? And you're like, just be. And I think that's the next year is going to be very interesting as we come back out of this and we start to exercise again. And I had so many people say to me, oh, you get, I have, and by the way, I do have a treadmill in my bedroom. I just didn't get on it. Like I'm, I'm a certified personal trainer and health coach since 2002. Like I, I know what to do, but it was so overwhelming that I just didn't. And I, so if you went through that, I mean, I, I, I don't know what else to say other than I hear you, sister. Like yeah. it just, it just happened. And I did. I love wine. <laughs> I really love. Been I love drinking red it. wine, and it was just so nice to sit at night with Bings and watch. Hallmark, Hallmark channel. channel and watch and it's funny because I uh, you know I have I and then I binged um, Heart of Dixie on Netflix you yeah there were some long shows yeah. yeah could have been writing a dissertation but I don't know I don't it's, know what it was we've never been through a pandemic <laughs> we've never been through this before and everybody has reacted differently at the beginning of the pandemic I thought I'm going to make videos. I have nothing but time. I'm going to just make videos like crazy. And as everyone has learned, that is not how life turned out. I, I found myself not wanting to get dressed and not wanting to put on makeup and not wanting to do my hair and just not wanting to just, and it's depression. It's just flat out depression. And that's, Let's just call it what it is. And we're all going through now depression and anxiety. And now we're finally, looks like maybe coming out of the pandemic. And we're just going to wear a lot of stretchy pants. Yeah. And that is, and, and so imagine the trip to Iowa. So almost exactly a year ago. So we're coming back Iowa to LA, still kind of planning gas stops carefully so that 
Um, but everything was open, but like one rest stop. Yeah, we most things were open. It's it was still a little closed in California, but it was very open in the Midwest. We're not even gonna get into that in this video. Well, we might. something yeah no mask wearing in Kansas nobody in the store in a mask so we looked like we look like weird people. smart people smart people or as caring as, people we look like yeah. some of those damn liberals we did look like some of those damn liberals yes well, them damn liberals oh them damn liberals anyway, but the they were very nice to us they were very nice but seriously like what eight people in that store and, and not a single mask inside yeah. anyway so speaking of which we can take ourselves yeah. down but okay um so anyway so <laughs> we're in kansas on our way toward wichita heading to albuquerque and we'll see what other states let's, aren't wearing masks yes let's do the great pandemic road trip of 2021 well the day before i got on the plane i finally had my eyebrow microblading appointment so you will see, and anyone who's watched my makeup videos has noticed that as my microblading has faded, it has faded to a very red tone. And I discussed this with my microblade artist and she said, we're gonna need to make them darker at first so that when it fades, it fades to more of an ash tone. But are you okay with having really dark brows for you know a few weeks? And I said, sure. They're really dark, and when you see throughout the video, they are really, really dark. Didn't stop random people from talking to her for a really long time at rest stops to the point where we didn't want to be rude and you were being so kind. But it was like, we have to go Yeah, now. we need to go, dude. It was, it was funny, and we know more about a man. It was on Route 66, but his sister met her husband online, and they cruised Route 66. They, they got married on Route 66. It was like this whole story. Meanwhile, we're like, yeah, we kind of like, need, yeah, need to get it. Come on, go. come on. Um, and I'm jumping around a little bit, but, but we did all of Route 66, almost all of it. So Route 66 starts in Chicago, and it ends at the Santa Monica Pier. Well, I, Fairfield, where I live, is um, four hours from Chicago, straight on there. So when I picked Monique up, we basically picked it up there and took it all the way across the country. So we got our kids. On Route 66. 66. <laughs> you can sing. Yeah. Yeah. Some In fact, <gasps> she has an album. And oh, it's available. Right. We had a little splash of wine. We are having Robert Mondavi Butter Chardonnay. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, that sounded so great. that nice? You know, we need glasses with the sayings from the road. Yeah, yeah. You need, and do, when the world opens up again, we should do girls trips. I, I just think, and we did have wine at night, and we had a little, what were our two big sayings? Well, you oh. always say. Um, well, I always say, love you bunches. Yeah. So... Yeah, it's like, and I'd the, like to have a wine glass that says, love you bunches. Yeah, and... And we also get in the habit of saying, well, you know, karma's a bitch, so you don't have to be. I just love that. I think it's like... But I think if I were going to put it on a wine glass, I'd say, karma's a bitch, so I don't have yes. to be. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's like, I like karma. Karma's my friend. Karma helps us out. It does. You know, it is one of those things that things happen, and if you just wait long enough, yeah. Usually it all comes back around and you don't have to do anything about it. You don't have to get revenge. You don't have to do anything. Just wait. I have never been to the Midwest, so this was all new territory for me. So we started out in Iowa, and I was honestly astounded how flat everything was. Everything was super flat. We drove for about three hours that first day. Um, God, because I don't longer. Is that it? I know. It, yeah, I think it was about yeah, was three, three hours. We don't do driving at night for various reasons. One, um, in our youth, I can't see at night very well anymore. I never could, though. Like, yeah. even when I was younger, yeah. I, I've always, I've, I've worn glasses since fourth grade. 
So contacts like that night glare, it's happened to me forever. But also in the Midwest, you have deer who will run out and run into your car. Notice I didn't say you run into them. They literally run into you. And that will put a damper on a trip. So yes. at dark, we stopped. It's a bummer for us. It's a bummer for the deer. So we just decided as soon as, it, as soon as the sun went down every day, that's when we called it quits. And we didn't film really, we didn't film anything in our room. So we don't have, you missed all the slumber parties with the pillow fights. No, we really got to our room. We poured ourselves wine and drank a glass of wine and went to sleep. And that was it. <laughs> yeah, well, driving just drains you, and you probably know this. And and the best part, I think, about traveling with Monique is we could be dead silent, like totally silent, cruising along. Um, we we um, examined and discussed the Taylor Swift past two albums. Yep, the Folklore and Evermore, because I am obsessed with those albums. I If you want to know what the soundtrack of my life is, just get those albums. I'm like... A huge Swifty over 50. So, and my, the soundtrack of my life is like old country, 1970s and 80s country. And these weird songs would come on and uh, I would know all the words. And poor Monique would be like, what is this? I was, I really enjoyed listening to the Loretta Lynn songs yeah. because I've not been a country music person. I'm not, that's not been the genre that I've followed. So listening to it and, and realizing how political her songs were and about feminism it was really really fun so maybe break out some old Loretta Lynn if you have not listened to her in a while or ever I recommend it. yes and, you know but these worth. are things it's not like if we wouldn't have taken this 29 hour car trip I don't know if we ever would have had those conversations. Like, I don't know if it would have come up that we would sit around and you'd say, here, let me play two complete albums of Taylor Swift. And then this, this, or, and discuss every song. <laughs> and what do you think? And and the, the one, like Loretta Lynn, it was right when the pill, you know, if you think about it, it's late 60s, early 70s. And she has one song called The Pill. And then she has another song, um, One's on the Way, where she refers to it. But again, yeah, very... Um, it, it, prolific in regard to the fact that she recorded them. I think Shel Silverstein wrote one of them, the, he wrote the Giving Tree children's books, um, Where the Sidewalk Ends, yeah. wrote this famous country song. So it's just, uh, we just highly recommend a car trip. Maybe not from Iowa to California. You can maybe do just like a little four hour trip for a weekend with a girlfriend. Just saying, once the pandemic is over, Highly recommend it. And we should really talk about the trip now. Or should we make multiple videos? I'd love to ask you, but I kind of have to make that decision on my own. Um, okay, so Iowa was really, really flat. And then we stopped in Kansas City. Nope. Before Kansas City, I cannot believe that this wasn't one of the most momentous things in your oh, life. I'm so sorry. I'm so You're right. There were bridges. The bridges of Madison County. And we got Madison County wine. <laughs> so just let me tell you, my mom, so I'm adopted. So I have a mom in Iowa who raised me. And then my mom, who's my biological mom, I met her when I was 26, lives in L.A. Um, but my Iowa mom would have loved that wine. We got Madison County wine, which we didn't drink until... Albuquerque. No, we didn't stay in Albuquerque. We stayed in Tucumcari. We did. The fact that you can say that. Tucumcari. Was that the I feel adventure? Like I need to... No, that was Needles. Oh, yeah. Needles. I'm never going to forget Needles, no. California, except for just then I forgot Needles. <laughs> I won't forget the experience. I we just laughed so much on this trip. But, so first... <laughs> Needles, California is where we use blue painter's tape because I lost the cork to the wine and we had to, oh wait, I'll say that. That was a teaser. Hold. Okay. Yeah. Bridges of Madison County. Bridges of Madison County. So here's a little, we stopped off real quick and we, we got out of the car to stretch our legs. Not that we really needed it. We were barely stopped, started at that point, but we could, did a little walk around of one of the bridges of Madison County. And it's interesting how... So many people have have written their names on the inside, and it's kind of fun to walk through it. It's like, 
you see this, this sort of history of graffiti. Sullivan Girls and the Texas. August 2015. If you see this, drop a comment. Yeah, it is interesting that people from all over the world have defaced the bridges of Madison County. Yeah, are they all like that? Well, I don't know. Well, we yeah, only saw yeah. one. They're mostly. They're mostly. But like again, that. if you've watched the movie, um, it, most of it was shot in Iowa. Um, Clint Eastwood directed it, I think, as well. Meryl Streep was in it, and or and it's a book as well. Yes. Um, but but he was a. I think it's based on a true story. Maybe not. I don't know. Google for yourself or use your favorite search engine. But um, the whole idea is he was there to photograph for National Geographic these famous covered bridges. And they really, they're real. And they're there. The one we looked at um, was from the 1800s. Had Arms. been moved once. Oh, okay. Um, I read the little thing outside. Oh, she read the little thing on the outside. I think I have, I think I have video of you reading the little thing on the outside. So yeah, so we jumped back in the car after that brief stop for the bridges of Madison County, and then we kind of went through Missouri, right? Missouri. Yeah, we, we got just like a little bit of Missouri, then we went into Kansas, and we stayed in Kansas City. And I was like, are we in Kansas City, Missouri, or Kansas City, Kansas? I'm like, both. It's one it's town. Different. And I, I did not know that. I, I knew they were two separate ones, obviously, but I did not know they were two separate together. Yeah, it's just all... What a perfect pandemic way to start separate, yes. but together. And it's... Yeah, so we, uh... I don't remember the hotel. It was a Fairfield Inn. <gasps> oh, yeah. Yeah, we stayed at the Fairfield Inn. It was great. It was serviceable. It gave us what we needed, and which was two beds, some uh, sink with clean water. We never hit okay. the shower. Her super cute little travel case and my zippy bags. I, I had clear zippy bags, and we were going to take a picture of that, and we didn't. No, we didn't. Um, but, I, but you'll see throughout this video, we did the Iowa version and the California version of everything. So that night, we drank the California wine. Which was, I don't even recall what the, the name of it was. We bought it at Hy-Vee, and we bought it because it was a pretty bottle. <gasps> it was okay. It was, it was the wine. really pretty bottle, and it was a fun name. It starts with an F. You'll see it. We'll see it on the video sure. and yeah. it'll tell yeah. us. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I could research it. But no, no, who cares? Yeah. Got up next morning, 7 a.m., and uh, took a quick shower and hit the road. She took a shower. I put my hair in a ponytail. I just, I can't. I yeah. Couldn't. But I did eventually. I swear to God, I did shower somewhere. We did shower. Time. I think Chukumkari. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Somewhere. Yep, yeah, Tukumkari. You're right. I remember yeah. the shampoo. Yeah. Um, yes, this is, and it sounds like this was like a week. We just literally. It was four days? Yeah, because yeah. we took a little extra. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It's not freaking me out at all, honestly. Just getting a little regret. We felt like we were being set up for to be robbed. So Arizona. Such a fun set, set to see. see. Pacific time zone. We're in the Pacific time zone! 